I can't believe I did this. I forgot to put an actual dino gate on here. Goodness gracious, I'm a disaster. What is going on everybody? We are on a new server and we're preparing for a patch version 257. Get ready for the giant bee and the hell pig, the Deodon. This is something new that I'm gonna be doing. And uh, we were working on building the actual giant bee pen here. I wanted to make it kind of like a beekeeper area, but the giant bees are bigger than people. And I only put people-sized doors in here, which was a terrible idea. So we need to take out one of these walls and put an uh, actual dino gate in here, but I'm not gonna do that now. I'm not gonna do that now. That's not what this is about. This video is about preparing for the giant bee and the hell pig. And by doing, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of review the dossiers and kind of see what we could figure out for where they're going to spawn, what kind of food they're going to eat for taming, and just uh, see if we can get a conversation going and get all of us prepared for this update. So what I want to happen is I'm going to go over some of the ideas that I have for this update, you know, what I think they're going to eat for taming, where they're going to spawn, and then I want you guys to, you know, give me some ideas in the comments below. Let's have a little bit of a discussion and see, you know, how they're going to affect the meta in the future, because there's a lot of cool things coming out in this update, a ton of stuff, and I'm super excited about the giant bee and the deodon. And, uh, you know, all of my ideas might not be 100% right, and I don't mind having a little bit of debate in the comments below. And uh, hopefully at the end of this video, we'll all be a little bit more educated. And uh, without further ado, let's check out some of these dossiers. Alright, first up we've got the giant bee. In the wild, Apis lithohermea drones never stray far from their nests, which they build high in the island's redwood trees or on rocky cliff sides. Apis drones can be seen swarming around the nest in groups, but to get a look at the queen Apis, one would need to crack open the nest itself. Speaking from experience, this is not a pleasant task. At the untamable, oh, as the untamable Apis drones are quite territorial, I probably should have seen that one coming in hindsight. Take caution, Apis stings will significantly weaken any creature, creature which suffers them, and because the stinger is not barbed, Apis can sting multiple times without its stinger being ripped away domesticated a tamed apis queen will lay new drone eggs and construct a nest that survivors can farm for honey so long as they remember to wear specialized beekeeping gear said honey is not only sweet and delicious but laced with scents that land mammals find irresistible many hunters use it to bait their traps apis drones will also follow their queen bee into battle so they can be used for self-defense in a pinch there's a couple things that we can glean from here. Obviously, we know they're going to spawn in the Redwood and on rocky cliff sides. So probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to check out the Redwood first. And since they spawn high in the trees, I'm thinking a Thylacaleo is going to be the best for this. Um, I, You could also lean towards Flyers, but I'm just not a big fan of Flyers right now. I am a huge fan of... Of the thylacaleo though so i'm thinking if you climb up the tree and then open up the actual nest while on the thylacaleo um it might be a good way because you can still shoot off the thyla to actually knock out the the queen bee and kill all the drones and everything so i feel that that might be the best way i really want to know what your guys thoughts are in the comments below and maybe i'll try some of them out and see how they work um other than that the cliff sides that's probably going to be a random thing i have a couple spots where i think that may be um, a spot where they'll spawn. But uh, another thing that I'm super excited about is the actual Apis things themselves. Now, you can see on the dossier itself that it's got a um, poison marker here, and it's got four ticks. Now, I don't know if the ticks actually um, reference a different strength in the poison, but I'm kind of thinking that maybe this poison is going to be like the uh, Lamantrias on Scorched Earth, where uh, the poison both poisons you and slows you down, because it looks like these dinos at the bottom here are having a miserable freaking day. It's it, They look like they've had... And you can also see, like, the these little... It looks like the that poison... Uh, cloud that comes out of Lamantrias. I don't know if that's going to actually be a thing that happens when they sting you, but um, it kind of looks like, resembles that. So I'm thinking it's going to be both like a poison debuff and a slowing effect maybe because it says... That's my guess at least. I really want to know what you guys think. But the honey. The honey is something interesting. The way they word it, it sounds like you can lure uh, herbivores with it, but I'm thinking maybe this will finally be the herbivore prime meat that we've been wanting for a very long time. 
I'm really curious to see if that's going to work. It's probably going to be one of the first things I test once I do tame up a queen bee is, uh, is try that out and see if it works better than what we currently have to tame herbivores with. But, um, also, there's one other thing about the queen bee that we do know is that they are a florivore, which means they eat flowers. So I'm thinking to tame these guys, you're going to need rare flowers. So um, that is what I'm going to try first. I imagine, I don't know what else they would eat other than rare flowers because, I mean, bees, they, you know, that's what they do. So that's, I think that's a pretty logical decision right there is to bring some rare flowers to tame these guys up. I imagine they'll probably have a kibble. But I don't know what the kibble would be. That's That'll have to be something we'll figure out there. I really want to know what your guys' thoughts are on that as well. And uh, I'm kind of thinking that for the def defensive purposes, if the poison does end up slowing down dinos, maybe you could have these bees um, surround your base kind of like along the walls. And if anything ever tries to breach the walls, they'll get attacked by the bees and they'll slow down the whatever's trying to attack and you'll have time to actually take them out. Um... That would be really, really cool for a, a base defense strategy. I don't know. I really want to know what you guys think, though, um, because I want to be as prepared for this patch as possible. And if we can, you know, figure it out together, we're all the better for it. Next up is the Hell Pig, the Deodon. Deodon comedentis is the largest known species of Entelodon, an omnivorous family of ancient mammals that are sometimes referred to as hell pigs. Even though Deodon has many similarities to modern Hippotimidae, whoa, Hippotimidae, as it does to, to Suna, I have found that to be a suitably fitting nickname. Wow, I butchered the hell out of that. I apologize, that was pretty bad. Feel free to correct me down below. Uh, Deodon is as mean as it looks, and any survivor who wanders too close to its feeding grounds will find that out the hard way. As an omnivore with a voracious appetite, Deodon scavenges, forages, and hunts to survive. It has little qualms when it comes to its diet, and that has helped it thrive both on the island's dry grasslands as well as sandy ecosystems. That sounds like these are going to spawn on scorched earth. Super excited about that. Its temper hasn't hurt either, as many would-be predators would rather seek out less vicious prey. Its uncommonly high metabolism enables it to heal very rapidly, making it a difficult beast to bring down or even tranquilize. Domesticated. Many tribes have made excellent use of Deodon packs within their war parties, not only because of its fierce nature, but due to its remarkable ability to rapidly heal itself. I've theorized that this healing factor is why it seems to have such a high rate of food consumption, which also makes it difficult to maintain. Deodon may well eat its owners out of house and home. Far more extraordinary, however, is that this rapid regeneration is evidently able to make uh, to affect nearby allies and consequently worth the keep upkeep. So, this is pretty awesome. I'm super hyped about these Deodons. Um, there's a couple things we can glean from the dossier. Um, obviously, they're going to spawn in grasslands, which it says. And the really cool thing is possibly being spawned in Scorched Earth. It would, it would be nice to get a couple extra dinos going in Scorched Earth. And um, I'm looking forward to actually finding them there. Now, the grasslands, I've got a, pretty, a couple good ideas of where they're going to spawn. I mean, everybody pretty much knows where the grasslands are, so that's nice. Now, um, we've got three symbols here. Obviously, they're they're rideable. And then the heart sign, or not the heart sign, the, the cross there uh, obviously refers to its ability to regenerate quickly. But it's also got a pack buff, it looks like. So I'm wondering if that pack buff is to heal other dinos or if it actually gets a pack buff and, you know, gets an attack boost like the Allosaurs. It would be nice if more... Uh, Deodons equals more healing for the dinos that are also around it. But I have a feeling that the, st that the buff doesn't stack because that would be a little OP. Um, but I'm really curious to find that out. That'll probably be one of the first things that I actually test when it does come out. But um, I'm interested to see if it does stack. I imagine it would be a little too OP if that was the case. But um, I'm also wondering if the appetite is only increased when it's healing itself or... Um, you know, one of your other dinos, that is something curious. Or if it's just going to eat all the time, no matter what. It's, that's probably going to be the case. Nice thing about the Deodon is that it is an omnivore. And 
that means it, you'll probably be able to tame it with just about anything. It says it's not picky. I imagine probably using stuff like prime meats and uh, and stuff like that will make it a lot easier to tame. So I'm probably what I'm going to do is bring prime meat with me to tame it. Um, thinking that maybe it'll have a higher effect than anything else. We'll see. I'm, we have no idea what the kibble is going to be. So that's, you know, that's not really helpful. But uh, I'm pretty sure prime meat of some sort will be the best case scenario. Now I do have some ideas where these are going to spawn. So I kind of want to go check those out with you guys. See what you think. Um, I'm going to check those out real quick. And I'm just kind of scouting out the area just to kind of, you know, get a better idea of where these are going to spawn if possible, so that uh, you guys don't have to spend hours and hours looking through videos and searching for yourselves. And hopefully you'll be a little bit more pre prepared this way. So, for the giant bee spawning on cliff sides, this would be the area I would look first if you don't feel like going into the redwood and dealing with all the phyllas and all the other terrible freaking things that spawn in there. Um, this is going to be my best bet, which is right on the other side of the redwood. I'll show you the coordinates now if I can hit the right button. That is 43.3 and 67.1. Not too bad. This is it on the map right here. And um, I took that away too quick. There you guys go. But yeah, this would be my best bet for finding them on cliff sides instead of the actual um, redwood. And I might try it in here first. Man, I really need to build on that waterfall. It's freaking beautiful. But yeah, as far as the Deodon goes... Uh, it's going to spawn in the grasslands here because there are no sand dunes. Oh, man, I really like this area. This needs to be built on. And uh, the giant bee is going to be super easy to find because it's either going to be on those cliff sides. That's another good spot to find them in here uh, for giant bees. I know some people probably aren't going to want to venture into the redwoods because it's freaking terrifying in there sometimes. And everything wants to murder your face. This area here. Oh, 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 thank God. Whew. That was close. Can you come down here, Pterodon? This is, like, literally the worst thing that could have ever happened. Why are you not following me? <gasps> come come to daddy. Woo! We made it. Okay. But, yeah, there's some grassland here. And this is probably where I'm going to check for the uh, Deodons first is in this area. Um, all through here, nice, perfect grassland for them to spawn in. And um, probably going to be the best bet right off the bat to kind of get some Deodon action going. And, um... There's one other spot that I'm thinking of, which is near uh, Red Tower, I think. But this is the coordinates for this area. This is 47.7 and 78.9. Um, super nice open grassland area. It does say dry grassland. And I don't know if this is quote unquote dry grassland. But I guess we'll find out. Alright, so this is the second spot that I'm thinking. Everyone should know this spot. This is a little plateau that's near Red Tower and then the ocean's there. I'll show you guys where it is on the map real quick. It's right down here. And as far as coordinates go, it is uh, 73.7, 34.0. Not too bad, but this is a nice open grassland. And maybe it's this is considered dry glass grassland because of the the sandy bits. I don't know. That's my guess at least. But yeah, this is, uh, those, those, the, ah. <laughs> I can speak English. These are going to be the two places I check out right off the bat. And, um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below this video. This is something new. Um, I'll probably get a little bit better at it as we go. But, um, I feel like we've got a pretty good idea of what these things are going to require to tame, where to find them, and what they're going to be used for. And I really want to know what you guys think of them and how they're going to affect the meta. And um, I'm really, really interested to see the the bee honey. I'm also kind of concerned about the fact that you can't take care of them without some special kind of bee equipment or, uh, you know, caretaker equipment because they haven't listed any new gear coming out. So I don't know what that's going to be. I imagine maybe we'll get some kind of beekeeping suit, which will be really nice. That'll be some extra armor, never hurt anybody. And, um, but I'm curious to see if the honey is really going to end up being the herbivore prime meat that we've been waiting for for so long. Um, or if it's going to maybe, that's the only real thing that I could think of it being effective with. Because if it's not that, I mean, herbivores are already, you know, they don't run from you, they don't try and kill you. And I don't know why any kind of carnivore would be soothed by the smells of honey. 
maybe it's just the smell of the honey that calms them and soothes them and allows you to to tame them up i don't know let me know what you guys think in the comments below but that is all i've got for this episode I hope you guys all enjoyed it, and if you do want to see more videos like this in the future for all the new patches and stuff that's coming out, let me know in the comments below. I would be more than happy to. This was a lot of fun, and it's also pushed me to be better prepared for these updates so that I can get content to you out better and faster. But anyways, everybody, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, and if you did like the video, don't forget to share your support and smash that like button for me, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.